how to bargain and handle money in India. Visiting India means using a foreign currency, dealing with the Indian banking systems, and navigating a mostly cash-based economy. It also means learning how to bargain like an Indian. Here's what you need to know about money in India. Unless you're at a fixed rate shop, you'll have to bargain if you want to buy anything. This includes auto rickshaws, taxis, and even hotels. One time I arrived at a five-star hotel at around 9 p.m. and they wanted 8,000 rupees. I said no way, and I ended up paying only 4,000 rupees for that room. Indians are incredibly good negotiators. They're really good at going for your emotions, very comfortable with numbers, and they'll upsell until the cows come home. Here's a real life example of how I got a hooded sweatshirt for a really good price. The shop owner said 2000 rupees. I instantly reply 50. He laughs and says, no way. I reply 100. He says 1000. While standing at the door of the shop, I say 400 rupees is my best price and start to move away. He comes running and says, okay, deal. So that's part of the art, is learning what things are supposed to cost in India. The last point on bargaining is that any time you're engaging in it, try to have fun and not take it too seriously. Otherwise, it'll quickly get emotionally and physically draining. Outside of larger businesses, hotels and upscale establishments, most transactions in India take place in cash. So therefore, plan to carry cash with you at all times and don't expect to pay for things with credit cards. Use the ATMs. Bringing a lot of cash with you means having to carry it throughout your trip and running the risk of it being lost or stolen. Additionally, you'll have to exchange it once you arrive in India, which usually means having to exchange with someone and it can be a scam and it's also a way to lose money just because of the exchange rate. Fortunately, there are ATMs everywhere. To be safe, I recommend going with a friend and have a driver waiting nearby. Also, avoid showing how much money you withdrew and keep it concealed. Some ATMs in India can be quite finicky and don't always work, so it can require being persistent and going to multiple branches. As far as we know, all ATMs in India will only let you withdraw around 10,000 rupees or approximately $150 at a time. Having to make lots of small withdrawals is really annoying and can get quite costly with the fees. But at Citibank, they allow you to withdraw your maximum daily limit in your home country. They're also one of the few banks that allow you to read chip cards. Never use the airport currency exchange unless you absolutely have to. They give the worst exchange rates out of practically anywhere in India. Instead, your hotel may even do the exchange for you, or they can arrange a trusted Forex representative to come to your hotel room. Get a wad of 10 rupee notes from the bank. One of the best tips we can give for handling money in India is to carry a stack of crisp new 10 rupee notes. The 10 rupee notes are often disgustingly used and dirty, so you'll appreciate having new ones. It's one of the smallest denominations available in bills, so it's used a lot for everyday purchases and especially places where they won't give change. You absolutely need those tens. All you do is just go to any bank and ask them to exchange your 1,000 or 2,000 rupee notes for tens and you'll walk out with a fat wad of crisp new notes. Don't carry too much cash with you. If you carry around way more cash than you need, it'll be an even bigger blow if it gets lost or stolen. Of course, you'll need to have enough to cover anything unexpected, but you probably don't want to carry anything more than 20 to 30,000 rupees at a time. Always carry money under your clothing. We've had pickpockets and beggars put their hands in our pockets looking for money, but since we keep our valuables on our chest concealed under our clothing in a neck wallet, we've never had anything stolen. Spread your cash between bags to store it. If you're nervous about carrying money, spread it between your neck wallet and your luggage. That way if something gets stolen, you'll only ever lose a portion of your cash. 